guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. It's Thomas. I'm so excited that you guys are here joining me today. We are going to answer some questions that you all have sent in. You have sent in some amazing, amazing, amazing questions. I'm so excited to get this started. Okay, um, I'm going to do a little backtrack. Okay, so in the first video that I had posted, I told you all how to post or I mean how to send questions in. You can send questions into the Facebook page. It is It's Promise with two E's. No, um, what's it called? <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. What is it gonna post to me? Y'all know what I'm talking to me. Not Twitter savvy. I'm gonna let you know that now. But I'm gonna try and we're just gonna get this thing going for you guys, okay? So now we're gonna answer a few questions that we have. Our first question we have is, why do people you're close to always want handouts when it comes to business? I believe that people that we're close to want handouts because they feel like they're obligated or they feel like they're entitled to something. So say that if they helped you in any kind of way, get to where you are, they feel like, um, well, since I helped you, you, a lot of people want, if I did something for you, you do something back for me. That That's the kind of world we live in. Like you do this, I'll do this for you, but we have to get to a point where we just do things out of the kindness of our own hearts, or we do things because it's the right thing to do, not expecting a handout back. So that's what I believe. Another thing I want to add to that is there's a difference between handouts and asking for help. So, but you have to, when you differentiate the two, and if you come to realize that they actually need help, but so if you're taking it in the form of a handout, I think it's better that you find out why. Okay, so it's one thing that I've realized over my past years of life. Side note, it just turned 20 on the 27th. But you never know what someone's going through. And you may you hear that a lot and it kind of sounds like kind of like a little. Okay, guys, the next question that we got is why do you think the church deems individuals who are part of the lgbt community or women who are pregnant more than a murderer or a predator this is a very complex question here um let's say this i am a, a christian i'm a believer of jesus christ so all of my advice is going to come from what I grew up on, okay? So just saying, you may not agree with a lot of things that I say. Um, you may not agree on a lot of my positions on things, but I'm just going to give you how I feel on it. And just that's just a sidebar or a caution as I answer these questions. Um... So when she, when the person asks, why do you think the church deems individuals? I say, well, I don't feel as if they do. I feel though that it is, I feel like it's more of a personal perspective on how you see things. Um, because if you have like a person that, um, that doesn't really know much about God or know much about, um, how he works and you have them coming into and them seeing what you're seeing it's going to be two totally different perspectives versus me being um god being a big part of my life and seeing these things so with that being said i want to say that i don't feel that the church thinks individuals um who are part of the lgbt community so and based off my background and how i was raised and my knowledge of things and studies of things i just don't feel that they do so i can't really answer that question the way you want me to answer it Moving along. <laughs> the next question. <laughs> next question. Okay, you guys. Let's move along. The next question is, why is it hard to figure out what I want to do in life and what is my passion? Your passion is something that... Sidebar. I just came back from a conference in Kentucky. And one of the speakers was talking about your passion for things. And they said, you don't know it's a passion unless you can do it without getting paid for it. Or getting any kind of recognition for it. So, um, like me, like with YouTube, when I was talking to some people about me doing YouTube, they was like, oh, promise. Oh, it's going to be so good. It's going to be so well. Um, oh, then you're going to get paid for it. 
I wasn't even thinking about getting paid for YouTube because I that wasn't what my thing was to give a voice to the voiceless. That is all I'm basically trying to do. I'm trying to help others, and I'm using this as my platform to help others. So I feel like the way that you can find out what your passion is, the easiest way for me is not only to pray and ask God to show you, to open up your eyes to what um, you like to do, or to add to that, I would say to write down everything that you like to do. When you write down everything you like to do from that list, take things that you like the most. And from that list right there, you never know till you try them. So if you just stay in one little box and you say, well, I do like this and I do like that, try it. See what fits. See what works. See how you feel about certain things because you never know until you actually do it. Um, and another thing is don't let other people force you to do something that you don't want to do because you're not going to do nothing but end up being lonely, miserable, depressed. You're going to be sad all the time and you're going to be sitting there wishing, why didn't I listen to what? I wanted to do. Instead, I listened to what mama. When mama went to Harvard and studied law, daddy went to Harvard and he studied um, medicine. So that means I have to go and study. No, you set your own path. You do what you feel is best for your life. Because at the end of the day, if you don't like it, you can't say what mama said. Well, daddy, it's about you. You. So, find out what you like to do, what makes you happy, and go for it. Okay, that's all what I'm off for. I'm all for going for it. Okay. Um, another thing is, don't don't follow what other people around you are doing. Cause that's that's a big thing from where I, the place that I live, <laughs> the wonderful city that I live in. I'm realizing that it's just a lot of competition. That's all the city I live in. It's just like a big competition. Everyone's doing the same. Basically, everyone's doing the same thing. Every and not don't get me wrong. If that's what you do and that's your passion, then you go for it and you be the best at it that you can be. But if it's not something that you want to do and it's just something that you're just good at, or it's just something that oh yeah yeah I can do whatever yeah I'm a, but don't let that be the reason why you're doing it. Don't let it be that because it's just going to do nothing but just waste your time, waste your effort, waste your money. So just don't even put your emotion, don't even put your feeling inside of it because you're just going to be hurt at the end. Okay, you guys? Okay, guys, this is my last question I'm going to do today. And my question is, how do you deal with a breakup slash heartbreak? You guys, <laughs> woo, okay. This is just, it's really funny how things work because my parents, they teach, they teach me, they instill in us how we should handle certain things. And we, this is just parents in general, they, this is what they do. But we don't take it because we feel like, well, they don't really know, or they don't really understand what I mean. I can say that when our parents were teenagers, they handled things a certain way, and there was a certain way of doing things then, and how now it is kind of different, but ultimately, at the end of the day, it still has the same foundation, okay? So, no matter, oh, well, her situation, well, she was like this when that happened, so you can't really use that. At the end of the day, you, it really, you really can. So, what I would say is how to deal with a breakup or heartbreak. heartbreak. I would say... That people feel like right after the heartbreak, you have to just jump right back into life. It is okay to be sad. It is okay. It is okay to be sad. Depression is all, depression is all in your mind. And people feel like, you no, know, this happened and it made me like this. It didn't make you like anything. You have a choice. You can choose to be happy when something happens. You can choose to be sad. Like, everyone knows. Like, when I went through the situation, I had to say to myself, you know what? Promise, you're not going to be sitting around up in here all sad, listening to Scissor. 
mad at everybody. Like you not, you're not gonna do that. So I was smiling and happy. And, um, a couple of friends, I was telling them about the situation. They was like, I don't want to see how you're so happy. Like, like since you have to, you have to come to the realization in your life that situations are going to happen. Things are going to happen. Ooh, not everybody is meant to be in your life for a long time. I should just cut it there. They're not. They are not supposed to be in your life. And then when you mess up is when you hold on to those people that weren't supposed to be there for a long time. And then you try to make them. Well, no, we were together. Oh, this is the main thing. We were together since elementary. We've been we've been we've been together um since um middle school or we've been friends since high school and we're high school sweethearts. Maybe for that particular time. You weren't meant to grow with that person. That's what I'm trying to get you to say. So when you try to grow with them and it's not working, and instead of them uplifting you, they're pulling you down. You want to know why everything is not going right and why you're not moving up. That's the reason why, because you're trying to drag them on this baggage, this dead weight with you. So you have to let the weight go. I just got all off topic, but you just have to let that weight go, okay? And... But I was saying that it is okay. It is really okay to be upset. It is okay to have your moment where you have to sit back and then collect all your thoughts and get yourself together. If most people, they get out of a, a nasty situation, they get out of a mess, they get out of a nasty um, relationship, a toxic relationship, and and toxic doesn't always have to mean that somebody's beating you. It doesn't always have to mean that somebody is cussing you out. Toxic, toxic can be anything for someone just not, uh, not supporting you the way you need to or not talking to you the way that you need to be um, spoken to. It can be anything. like It doesn't have to be anything like abusive or anything like that. But it can cause you to fall into this deep depression in mind. And depression is a, such a strong mental thing. And if you don't if you don't build enough boldness in yourself to say, look, I'm not doing this. I'm not selling for this. I can't. You're going to stay there. And you can't blame it on somebody else from where you are. All right, guys. I just want to say I appreciate all the questions that you all have sent in. Um, if you have any more questions that you would like to send in, just send them in to our Twitter page, Facebook, or Instagram. And they're all the same. They're It's Promise with two E's. Um, no apostrophe. So it's ITS dot promise with two E's on it. Um, so I just really appreciate everybody for sending in the questions and everything. Um, one last thing. School starts this week. So I just want to give a little advice to the incoming students. I just want to say that I'm beyond proud of everyone who is going back to school. And this is with students. This is for, um, young adults that are going to school you're going back to get your GED or if you're going back to get um, a certification or anything like that I just want to say that I'm proud of everybody taking that step to go back um, one big thing that's been on me is to start off strong start off strong and finish strong but just put your best foot forward with everything um, don't wait till the last minute to try to get things situated if you can all don't put off for tomorrow what you can do today that is the best quote. I, I absolutely love that quote. So again, I just want to say thank you all for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, I will try to post. I will post. I will be posting a video every Monday. Okay. I will start off every Monday. I will be posting a video. So just watch out for that. Um, again, I just really appreciate everybody. I appreciate the support. Um, and again, I'm going to say again that you may not agree with everything that I say. But it is okay. It is okay. Okay? Because everyone's entitled to their own opinion. And if you would like to have anything, any advice that you would like to be posted on here, all you have to do is just send it to the Instagram, Facebook, or the Twitter page, and I'll happily put it. You guys, now, let's just make these. <laughs> When you send things in, you guys, please be appropriate, okay? <laughs> okay, guys, that is all for today. I really appreciate it again. I keep saying thank you, but y'all just do not understand how much this really means to me. So just always remember that I love you, God loves you, so that's all that matters. We'll see you next Monday. Bye!